for the application. So an inorganic uh, thermometry module was used as a backup uh, solution. Uh, the demonstrator was successfully validated on a burner bench in order to reproduce the real working or driving conditions. Um, wireless data transmission by the wireless sensor no and the, uh, by the IoT gateway was uh, successfully validated as well. And uh, through the RSB test, it was confirmed that vibrational fatigue has no impact on the system performance. So a last slide to, to, to remind the, the consortium um, of, the, of the project. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you, Mauro. OK. So is there um, any question from the audience? But maybe I can have a question to yes, of course. relay the conversation. It was a very interesting, the, the presentation, Mario. Just a curiosity about uh, the wireless transmission in the IoT platform, because uh, sometimes uh, it's uh, an obstacle in the implementation of this kind of device, especially we speak, if we speak about IoT. Uh, did you have uh, many problems to solve uh, to implement this? Or uh, was a smooth uh, procedure for you? Uh, for me, it was a smooth uh, procedure, uh, thanks to the work done uh, by the, the, the other partners, uh, in particular uh, ICCS, um, uh, that developed the IoT gateway. And uh, <clears throat> we had some problem at the beginning uh, on the refreshing time that the, the, the old platform uh, um, took uh, too long from for um, recording, transmitting and recording the, 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 the data, but uh, um, after solving this uh, little issue, then the, there was no, no, no problem related uh, with that. Yeah, there's um, somebody uh, who raised uh, yeah. his hand, Bruno, you can. Yes, you thank can you. I am Bruno Vicenzi from APMA, from the STAT project, also working on thermoelectrics. Um, just as a curiosity, if you could disclose which kind of uh, inorganic um, thermoelectric materials has been used in the modules uh, that you uh, validated. Yes, uh, given the uh, thermal, uh, the, the temperature range uh, that was chosen to be compatible with uh, organic thermometer modules, uh, we uh, could use uh, actually um, a standard bismuth telluride thermometer module because the maximum temperature was 235 degrees, so perfectly compatible with the uh, uh, bismuth telluride thermometer module whose maximum temperature, uh, according to the specification, was around uh, 250. Uh, so there, there was no need to use some fancy or exotic uh, thermoelectric uh, material that usually are um, the inorganic one are more looking at high temperature, for example, a half Osler or uh, silicides and other materials like that. Just uh, bismuth telluride uh, thermoelectric materials. OK, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So is there any other question? OK, if not, uh, we can close this uh, session. And we have a well, lunch break until 12, 12.50, where we, we will come back. And at the very end of the um, of the, uh, that session, before the, his cluster session, we will do a, a recap with the uh, just uh, pointing out the main achievements and the uh, drawbacks that we have encountered and any ways that can be uh, far further improvements uh, into these energy harvesting systems. So um, I will share the, a slide that we will come back at 12.50 here, OK? Thank you very much for your attendance and all the speakers for your presentations.
timing. Ah, I, you are you are muted. I mean, did you say something else, Roy? Yes, now we can hear you. So uh, when you want, you can share your presentation. I already share my presentation. And do you see something on the screen? Uh, uh, no. Not yet. No. Okay. Yeah, I close this. Again. Yeah, I mm -hmm. try it again. I close this and try it again. Is it smooth? No, oh, it seemed as mm. oh. not yet. No. Mm, okay. So It's not working neither, but uh... okay. So, um, can you open it from the um, yes, yeah, I will from the let SharePoint. Me, yeah, so let me yeah, check where I have, have it. Some... Just a minute. So the one you uploaded yesterday, right? Yeah, okay. Yes, please open it and share to everyone. Okay, and please help me to move to next slide. <laughs> yeah, let me tell everybody. Okay, let me share it. Here it is. Okay, let me know when I have to pass the, the slides. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, right. I saw it. Okay, now I'm started. Uh, thank you very much for uh, on your participation of the income mass final workshop. And as a part of the Nano Seal, we would like to um, present today the one step map distributions of compounding for thermal electric generators and the um, abilities for the recycling of the thermal electric generators. Next slide, please. Uh, and um, who we are? Uh, we are NanoSeals company based in Belgium, and we are one of the most uh, biggest of uh, industrial uh, multi world carbon nanotubes manufacturer. And we also provide the compounding lines of micro batches of the thermoplastic, thermoset polymer, and multi world carbon nanotubes. And now we also collaborate in the income map projects for the energy harvesting system of the part of the thermal electric generators. Next slide, please. Uh, we are NanoSeal that started from 2002. This is the spin off from University of uh, Namur and Liège in the south of Belgium. After 22 years of uh, route and development, nowadays that we uh, have the capabilities of production of around 500 metric tons of the multi world carbon nanotubes with commercial rate that we not at NC7000. And also, we provide around more than 3,500 tons of master batches of the polymer and carbon nanotubes. And from, uh, very recently, last year, we joined in the Aditya uh, Beer Club. Uh, and with the, the name brand of the Big Black Carbon, and now Nanosin, we are a part of the uh, Big Black Carbon for the um, two targets of the energy uh, market and to widen our applications with the um, uh, beyond our conventional market of the thermoplastic polymer, the transport, the energy, the electronics, and extra. Next slide, please. Uh, difference with the single work carbon nanotubes that we talked a lot uh, this morning with when we had after the group packet three, we decided to move forward for the fabrication of the thermal electric generators with the single work carbon nanotubes of tuber. And now we as the multi work carbon nanotubes, well, if we have the characteristic 
a little bit different from the single world. Uh, nano C we actively contribute to certain core practice that you see on the screen um, uh, with the collaborations with all the partners with IMANS, um, Circle, IPF, Extra. Next slide, please. Uh, in the um, uh, big schema of the uh, energy, um, energy harvesting system, that's including three parts of the thermoelectric, piezoelectric, supercapacitor, and uh, nano -seed. That's we work a lot uh, for the de uh, development and also the scaling up in the part of thermoelectric generator. Uh, yeah, we'll move forward, please. Yeah, more, more. Thank you. Uh, and uh, in the frame of the um, uh, consortium, we provide the multi work carbon narrative with different rates, commercial and also some rates uh, in the state of the R&D and also on the, um, uh, pilot lines of compounding extrusion for fabrication of the B-type and N-type of the thermoelectric generators as you see in the schema of the uh, the um uh, how uh, functional of the thermoelectric generators next slide please uh yeah next slide uh, the first part that we're talking about is how to scale it up and the second part i will talk about the mechanical recycling of the b-type and n-type for the um, uh, scaling up that we talked uh, first of the B type of the uh, thermal gener uh, electric generators, that we have the at nano seal, that we uh, work a lot of work to have it done to optimize all of the parameters for the extrusion with the recipe transfer from our partner of Iman and IPF for the B-Thai uh, rate of the polycarbonate and multi work carbonate nutrient that we optimize with the uh, temperature uh, with different zone in the extruder, the screw profile, screw speed, etc. And finally, we are successfully in uh, scaling up the B-Thai of thermal um, uh, electric generator by extruder and we have all full possibility for you know, industrial production of kind of B-Thai. And here is, is the uh, table to present the thermal uh, electric uh, characteristic of the, the polycarbonate and uh, multi-work carbonate of commercial rate 7000 and for the research rate. Uh, and this is the full image of the P type the, with the industrial production. Next slide, please. And concerning the N type, that we have quite a challenges because of when the the recipe of the third components of the additive of polyethylene glycol (BEG) in the composites of polycarbonate and multi work carbonate drift, thus we had the quite big difference of the melting temperature between polycarbonates around 230 degrees Celsius and for the BEG around 65 degrees Celsius. Thus we have the block of the extruder uh, uh, between the hoppers and the extruder in the screw extra. And uh, next slide, and so that's why um, uh, nanosim that we suggest uh, we add in some intermediate step to solve the, this problem. For example, for the first step, we need to mix uh, our carbon nanotube uh, with the polyethylene glycol BG by using the uh, mini extruder DSM, and then we need to uh, transfer to the second step uh, of pre-mix uh, the back. Uh, multi work chip with carbon and a chip uh, with, with the polycarbonate BC. And then for the third step, we move into compounding the virgin polycarbonate with the master bed um, uh, prepared in um, uh, during two previous steps. Finally, we are successful in compounding the anti of the tech uh, of the TG by extruder. However, more research and more study um, you know, should be implemented to have fully uh, industrial um, production of the end type of TEG. Next slide, please. And here's the table to summarize on the characteristic of the T uh, thermoelectric properties of the 
uh, B type and N type after um, uh, when we using the industrial uh, extruder for the production. And uh, in the table below, that's when we have to show you how much the work has been done at our partner Iman ETF and NanoSeal, that we need to screen in on of the potential carbon nanotube of single world, multi world, different rate. And so finally, we, how we can find out the final recipe for the production. And also the, the, uh, the table on the right to see the characteristic of the TE properties of composite polycarbonate and carbon nanotube, and also for the big poly ether ether ketone with the carbon nanotube. Next slide, please. In the second part, I talk about the mechanical recycling of the P-type and N-type. As you see in the work package tray presented by Maria this morning, that we have the um, uh, um, uh, polymer that's the application for automotive and aeronautic based on polycarbonate and big. And so we're assuming that uh, all of the TEG use and we collect it, and then we already remove the housing case of epoxy and metal connections of copper extra. And then we use the composite along with the polymer, thermoplastic polymer and carbon nanotube, which thread into the small pieces and is ready to put into the hopper for the extruder. And at NanoSeal, we perform the uh, several uh, circle of the mechanical recycling uh, steps. Um, as designed by the work bucket trees that we use uh, single work carbon nanotubes uh, from tuber at Oshio for you know, to move forward to making TEG prototype. However, we do not have the single world CNT at NanoSeal, and also we um, uh, we use it, which we decided to use a multi work carbon nanotube for this project because it's available and also. Uh, based on the much lower cost of the multi work carbon uh, for the future when we might king the TEG, etc. And uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, for the uh, recycling experiment, that we also um, uh, using the uh, the uh, the uh, the industrial pilot uh, compounder line, and so we perform five circle of recycling that we mark with the error meaning that recycling and that we work with polycarbonate and big and later that we use the, with the, the sample that we perform a lot of categorization to find out how the property change before and after recycling uh, process and that we perform some uh, measure of the for example the male volume rate the surf the resistivity of power surface and vo in volume the mechanical of impact text a, um, for TGA for um, and also measure the thermal electrical characterization uh, at EPF. Next slide, please. And when um, uh, we obtain all the results, and here is the uh, present in the table for the B-type of TEG with uh, the um, sample of the polycarbonates and uh, including 5% of uh, multiple carbon nanotubes. And after a fine uh, mechanical recycling circle, that's we uh, have the, the uh, receive a significant increase of the melt volume rate, meaning that we lowering the viscosity of the um, uh, materials, meaning that when when we after several extrusion steps, that we have potentially to package the polymer change and also the three dimensional network of carbon nanotubes. Uh, um, however, when we test the mechanical properties that we witnessed that the impact strength of the initial um, uh, polycarbonate and multi work carbon chip and uh, comparing to at the uh, fifth circle of uh, mechanical recycling, that we obtain nearly the same of the impact properties. Next slide, please. Uh, however, concerning the um, uh, resistivity that we witness a significant increase of the uh, uh, surface resistivity. Uh, however, volume that we maintain uh, just uh, one uh, order of magnitude. 
uh, and for the you know, thermoelectric properties that we maintained the same. Conclusion is that uh, for the uh, reuse of the recycling of the you know, B type the TEG of the base on the polycarbonate and multiple carbon tube, thus we have the just you know, we, we we target for the properties of the mechanical property rather than the uh, electrical conductivity. Next slide, please. Uh, very interesting to find out the result of the big and multi work carbon uh loading at five weight percent when we increase uh, the uh, we continue for the recycling um, uh, processes and for comparing to the initial one and for the the end of the recycling after five circles and we find out that. In, in even though that we witnessed the increase of the net volume rate of the um, uh, materials, however, for the uh, resistivity of power volume and surface that we keep the, in the conductive zone, it's a very very interesting. And also we we maintain the thermal electric um, properties nearly the same. And for the big and uh, carbon nanotube, it's a very, very expensive polymer. And when you charge with a carbon nanotube and after using with a TEG, that's we can target for a full uh, market of the certain um, uh, life of these materials for applications in electronics, semiconductor, automotive, the telecommunication, is rare. Next slide, please. The conclusion is that um, in the frame of the income approaches that uh, as that we um, uh, are successfully in scaling up power anti and B type of um, uh, um, uh, TEG based on the polymer uh, BC polycarbonate and big polyether ether ketone. Uh, for the mechanical recycling, that when we perform the mechanical recycling, we witness that we can maintain part of the properties of mechanical and uh, um, electrical properties, and we can using this re, uh, recycle uh, TEG for application, uh, for example, electrostatic discharge, ESD, uh, electromagnetic interference shielding, etc., and also the, into the markets of the automotive, aeronautics. Uh, Microelectronic extra. Uh, next slide, please. And thank you for your attention and thank you a lot for your all the partner that you have us to um, uh, for, to perform in the framework projects. And thank you on our partner and our colleagues at NanoSeal to help me a lot for the project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mim. So is there any question for me? Thank you, Cynthia. Okay. Thanks. So if not, maybe if uh, anyone has any question, please drop it in the in the chat. Uh, so we we move to towards the next presentation that will be presented by Sim Kunal. Uh, about the new active materials in supercapacitors. Hi, Sim. Hello. Uh, so, to start with, um, just for a moment. So, uh, dear audience, uh, I'm very happy uh, to represent uh, Skeleton Technologies uh, and also give an overview of uh, our role in this. Uh, uh, in this incomes uh, project, uh, so I will start uh, by uh, who we are. So our role, Skeleton's role, uh, were to be uh, an industrial partner in incomes. Um, we are basically a pan-European country uh, company. Uh, we say our among ourselves that we are combining German engineering and Estonian IT technology. Uh, so uh, we have locations uh, in uh, Germany, uh, headquarters in Estonia, Tallinn, and and also small pilot uh, production line in in, in Finland. Uh, one thing to maybe uh, point out here or, or emphasize is uh, we're building currently 
uh, the world's largest uh, and most modern uh, supercapacitor factory in the world uh, uh, in Markkanstad uh, near Leipzig. Uh, and the start of uh, production uh, is uh, this current uh, calendar year. And uh, this really elevates our business uh, further. I just want to <laughs> highlight this uh, today. So, and um, yeah, it elevates our business, but uh, what is our business? So uh, in the uh, energy storage business, uh, we all know uh, lithium ion battery technology, uh, which is a chemical uh, chemical storage system, uh, usually uh, due to the uh, chemical uh, aspect of it, it is uh, uh, much slower. Uh, we say that it is basically a kilowatt hour business, uh, but uh, skeleton technology is more uh, more like a megawatt per second business. So uh, uh, <laughs> it's it's not like competing thing, but it can be very much be um, complementing uh, complementing technology in order to um, uh, to level out uh, dynamic uh, responses, uh, high energy, uh, high power loads, uh, and so you don't have to uh, over dimension your batteries uh, and and also improve uh, the whole energy storage uh, uh, system uh, lifetime um, in that way. Uh, so, uh, what's the uniqueness or our advantage? I would Point, point out that uh, we're the only full value chain uh, manufacturer on the market at the moment. So, uh, yeah, we are producing our own uh, raw material as electro electrode material, uh, which is uh, patented uh, under name of uh, curved graphene. Uh, it really has many benefits uh, and and uh, more of that a little bit later. But uh, the full value chain means, means uh, that we produce uh, supercapacitor cells. Uh, on top of it, uh, industrial modules, different voltages and powers, um, and also integrated uh, in the in the in the uh, whole systems in terms of uh, cabinets with the cooling system, switch gear, uh, uh, supercapacitor management systems, and 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 all of this uh, to really integrate it uh, uh, to the to the uh, to the application. Uh, but the whole magic, uh, I believe, uh, is in this uh, electrode material. Um, a disadvantage comes from uh, mostly uh, about uh, uh, cumulative uh, pore volumes and uh, pore sizes uh, of this uh, curb graphene uh, material. We have also production of the, our first uh, generation supercapacitors which uh, uh, use uh, coconut derived uh, activated carbon, uh, which, which also have quite a nice uh, a performance KPI, a KPI numbers, but uh, with our known material, uh, we have uh, managed to increase the capacitance uh, and energy uh, even more uh, while uh, remain, uh, remaining uh, containing the, the high uh, lifetime of cycles and also uh, the power, uh, the power uh, uh, possibility. Uh, so. Uh, this is this is uh, we are very proud of that. So, and uh, just just one uh, uh, slide of uh, of market analysis, uh, not because of give some overview about the whole market, but just to maybe highlight a few things here. So we have uh, basically three different uh, uh, the th three different um, products um, where we uh, basically uh, have. Uh, uh, we have this first generation supercapacitor, then we have our own material uh, supercapacitor, and then we are also moving to the uh, to the niche market uh, of uh, between slower lithium ion batteries and supercapacitors to to uh, have applications uh, where uh, high power and high energy is needed uh, for for ranges to uh, minute till 15 minutes so so uh, this is also something that uh, i wanted to point out and also you have uh, some uh, comparison here of uh, state of the art uh, of uh, public state of the art of electrode material uh, uh, numbers of uh, capacitance uh, conductivity actual conductivity is uh, even even uh, uh, even higher and if you take uh, for example this t60 
industrial uh, uh, 3200 farad cell with our uh, material we are able to provide uh, with this form factor of uh, 5000 uh, farads uh, for example so yeah uh, so all of that was basically uh, is also seen in this slide uh, so i encourage you all of uh, listeners and partners also to visit our web page at, at, uh, at some point but uh, skeleton soul in the incomes uh, as already said uh, we were the uh, industrial partner uh, uh, giving uh, uh, giving uh, uh, also material provider uh, so uh, we gave context uh, for industry standards uh, how the performance of uh, uh, different uh, components should be uh, measured and tested in our perspective and uh, and uh, and uh, achievements uh, i would list out uh, the following so during this project very first time uh, our material was uh, tested uh, in novel ways uh, i hope you listened also the morning uh, uh, presentations uh, where Matti uh, from uh, Tampere University gave a very nice overview about some uh, some uh, things uh, where uh, this our material was combined also with polymers uh, uh, and and also uh, with aqueous uh, electrolytes uh, and uh, and this is this is something really uh, uh, nice and I uh, encourage you to look out this uh, nice paper that they published as well. Uh, well, some things uh, I want to point out more. Uh, so uh, during these projects, uh, these findings uh, really helped us to increase lifetime numbers of our products. Uh, products uh, were, were, were made more sustainable. Our curve graphene, uh, graphene was uh, uh, even purified even more and the carbon footprint uh, of the material was uh, really investigated in depth and and, and this is uh, also uh, highlighted here how how the uh, carbon footprint uh, is uh, co uh, compared to uh, conventional activated uh, uh, carbon so the main takeaway i would say uh, for us uh, is that uh, incomes project uh, really enabled us to develop uh, uh, in-house internal uh, uh, procedures uh, to improve our uh, patented material in and further and of course to be uh, a part of uh, so nice uh, consortium where uh, we have so many experts uh, all over the Europe uh, which really um, push the, pushed the boundaries of, of this uh, very important uh, field of research it is uh, yeah I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm glad of this. So uh, thank you, thank you for all. And uh, these are our our contacts. If someone wants specific information, they can reach out. So very brief. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sim. Very nice talk. So I don't know if anyone has a question. Please feel free to, to ask. Okay, so, so we are on time and we will move forward the business uh, cases for the energy harvesting systems and wireless sensors presentation. Hi, Dimitris. Hello. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can you use my screen? Yes. Okay, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, this is the presentation for uh, mainly the exploitation and dissemination uh, part of the project. Uh, today we're focusing on the business cases for our two main key exploitable results, the energy harvesting systems and the wireless sensors. Um, first, I wanted to start the presentation by, by mentioning who we are. Uh, and uh, they're our all in incomes. Um, we are a fast growing tech uh, company focusing on delivering uh, Industry 4.0 to 
technological solutions. Uh, we focus uh, our efforts to make industries uh, smarter, greener, more sustainable and uh, human centered. Uh, core is, is a member of the core group. We also uh, have core uh, innovation center and uh, our own dedicated product, uh, Corbit. Currently, the organization uh, has 65 uh, employees and uh, we have uh, last year uh, created a new, a new premises. Uh, it's a large building with uh, over um, 1,500 square meters and we uh, have participated in uh, 40 um, Horizon uh, projects. Uh, in terms of technologies, our main uh, focus is develop on developing solutions towards the achievement of smart, resilient and sustainable industry. Um, the, this involves Internet of Things, um, machine learning, deep learning, web app design, uh, edge computing and uh, big data from our side. Uh, now more related to um, our, our my work, we, especially within the project, uh, we have our own um, innovation management approach uh, to analyze uh, customer needs and uh, uh, form concepts through uh, the business model engineering methodology. Uh, mainly this involves the identification of uh, the exploited results and uh, their analysis, designing appropriate business models for these results, uh, also identifying, identifying potential uh, future investment uh, and funding options, and developing roadmaps for the scale-up of the project's results. Uh, we also focus on uh, the communication aspect. Uh, as you can see, we have participated in uh, uh, a long, uh, a large number of projects, and we have uh, developed visually aided communication uh, material to reach out different uh, audiences. And uh, in this uh, project, we uh, lead, I lead the, the uh, work package nine, the exploitation dissemination communication, and also participate in participate in uh, work package eight. Uh, so. Uh, the main three tasks that our core is responsible for is uh, the IP management and exploitation, the dissemination and communication, and the e-commerce market analysis for target industries uh, revenue as uh, assessment. Uh, now, uh, our motivation uh, within the project is to, um, we want to, our mission is to change the way uh, we live our lives for the better towards a greener, smarter, and more sustainable world. Uh, so the energy harvesting technologies have a great potential to achieve this goal. Uh, so uh, we focused a lot, uh, especially um, as the project was reaching the uh, later stages, the later phases, and with collaboration with uh, our technology providers to develop business cases and ensure that um, the income as technology could, could potentially provide solutions uh, to the challenges of real life uh, applications. Uh, so, um, by focusing on the work that was that has been done, uh, we start with uh, some drivers that drive, um, to our view, the um, uh, the industry. Uh, first, we have the uh, Internet of Things, where uh, there there are expected 29 billion um, IoT connections by 2027, leading to an exponential increase both of power demand and batteries. Uh, there, are, there is also an increased need to use wireless technologies uh, to mitigate challenges of uh, hard to reach uh, places, uh, with particularly the use of sensors. Uh, there is also a global but uh, also very European trend uh, driver or challenge, we could say the uncertainty, where um, uncertain economic conditions make in general uh, end users more uh, conservative uh, and they focus mainly on um, something that is lower investment and can bring value at a shorter uh, period and also uh, can promise a cost reduction. Um, and finally, we have some mega trends that have a longer scope but uh, drive uh, both uh, the funding and the uh, trajectories of the technologies. Uh, and in the case of Europe, we have the aging population and the shift of economic power towards Asia and Africa, uh, which uh, mandates um, 
a productivity increase uh, per capita uh, within Europe. Uh, so starting with the business cases, um, they are divided into three elements. Uh, first, identifying the problem that the potential customers are facing. Uh, the current state, uh, which uh, involves uh, the way they, they have been solving it so far. And finally, uh, potentially the benefit that the incomes uh, system or part of the income system uh, could bring to them. This could either refer to uh, the energy harvesting system or the wireless sensors. Uh, we have two key results. Uh, so we will start with uh, the container tracking uh, uh, with GPS devices. Uh, the problem is that the logistic companies need to be able to effectively track the location of their containers and uh, manage both uh, vehicle and asset and uh, their large volume of uh, inventory. Uh, the current state is that um, without GPS, companies orchestrate power-based, uh, paper-based systems and manual routes and uh, also they use telematics. Um, and uh, with the use of GPS, uh, the devices are very power hungry and uh, uh, a constant flow of data is uh, difficult, uh, flow of monitoring as well. Uh, the benefit potentially by the incomes could be that uh, they could uh, ensure a steady flow of power consumption so to, for, the, for the GPS. The next involves uh, oil and gas pipelines. Uh, the problem is that oil and the gas industry operate in extreme conditions with high temperatures and high pressures. Uh, the costs of corrosion uh, are very high and uh, the, they are very hard um, to reach areas uh, and make uh, replacements. So the current state is that the companies are either uh, employing exposed maintenance activities or uh, they are installing sensors to monitor activities and uh, utilize Internet of Things. Um, battery powered sensors have um, uh, increased limitations in this case uh, due to the location and the harsh condition of this operating environment. And, uh, perhaps, and the benefit that could emerge from the incomes um, of the energy harvesting system is that the, the, it could provide uh, self powered sensors. Uh, and providing uh, also a dedicated IoT system. Uh, also, there are some uh, potential uh, participants in the in the market. We have the P PCB, P Piezotronics, we have Kinergizer, we have Enervibe. Um, the next segment involves the sports environment, which um, mostly reflects on um, the physical uh, uh, um, body of uh, the athlete. Uh, their workload involves uh, the distance traveled, speed and training regimes. Uh, the main goal is to prevent unexpected injuries, so they must find the optimal way to uh, train and uh, mitigate, find ways to mitigate the injury potential of the athlete. Uh, the current state is that uh, most of the trainers have uh, a visual collection of uh, the, athlete, the athlete's data during games and practices. Uh, and the, the benefit of the incomes it could orchestrate on a specific um, provider to this uh, um, segment would be uh, the use of uh, real-time data uh, and uh, data analytics teams in, the, uh, in sports teams could uh, help decrease uh, soft tissue injuries and help their mentality. <clears throat> and uh, we have also the, me the medical devices, the health industry, specifically pacemakers. Uh, they are powered by batteries. Uh, these uh, need to be checked by specialists by specialists at a frequent basis. Um, this is the, the mainly the process and. Uh, uh, the main uh, the main thing the main issue is that the they may have uh, frequent surgeries uh, with which increase the patient's health risks and the current state is uh, that the, they should have regular checks to ensure that the battery is uh, okay and the pacemaker is work, uh, working properly every uh, three to twelve months depending on um, the situation. Uh, the doctor checks the uh, the battery and the pacemaker settings and the electrical pulse. 
the use uh, this the use of uh, the energy harvesting system or the wireless sensor in this case uh, would be a, a reduction of um, the maximum number of surgeries that would be done uh, during a patient's lifetime, uh, which really uh, increases if the pacemaker um, is um, installed in uh, at a very young age. And finally, we have the rail infrastructure. Uh, this involves um, uh, the increase in urbanization needs on the rail sector, uh, which constantly increases passenger and freight activity uh, while being uh, reliable uh, in terms of fair quality, safety, uh, increased maintenance requirements, delays, outda outdated control systems and energy consumption. <clears throat> More conventional race have been employing manual inspections, uh, routine and preventing uh, checks and time-based uh, time, timetable based operations and uh, more modern uh, infrastructure involves installation of sensors at critical uh, points to uh, utilize um, the uh, real-time data. Uh, trains are uh, subject uh, to vibrations, perhaps uh, this is something um, part of incomes could benefit uh, from to power sensors, signaling uh, systems and other low uh, to power sensors, uh, signaling systems and other low power devices and uh, enable uh, play a part in, in a continuous monitoring of the infrastructure. There are uh, some market participants here as well. We have Onio and um, uh, AI Nova. So, uh, in terms of conclusions, we the drivers shift the focus towards uh, low low powered applications, preferably in uh, remote locations. Um, besides the end users that were uh, presented in the uh, initial in the consortium, we have also uh, discussed the possibility of six other segments: the sports environment, container charging, oil and gas pipelines, medical devices, and uh, rail infrastructures, which could potentially uh, show potential for the income system. And that's all from my side. I don't know if uh, you have any questions. So is there any question uh, to Dimitris? Well, meanwhile, I'll take this chance uh, to let uh, know, Ming, that you have a question from Rolanas. I don't know if you're still connected. But uh, if not, maybe you can answer in the through the chat. OK. So, any question uh, for Dimitris regarding the the exploitation and all the business cases? Okay, so maybe we can move towards the next presentation. Thank you very much, Dimitris. So, Thomas Dawe will present the microfiber composites for energy harvesting. OK, I will try to start my yes. presentation here. Hold on one second, please. OK, can everybody see it? Yes. OK. Um, thank you very much for giving me a chance here. As uh, many have heard, I'm following in the footsteps of Jan, which I cannot really fill after Jan left the company um, last year. So um, I would today uh, give some of our understanding from the InCommerce uh, project here and with a focus on the macrofiber composite um, you have we have used in that. So uh, I don't go very long in what smart material is in that. I want to save the time of some of the uh, conclusions we made in this project. But smart material GmbH is uh, located in Dresden, Germany since 2002. It is the um, our parent company, Smart Material Corporation, in the United States, where I'm currently located. Um, uh, it's just uh, the morning did break, and um, our, our focus is development of um, piezo composite materials, 
which is not just the MFC, is 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 a is a broader area. If you have any interest in some of the other stuff we're doing, it's it's mostly in the ultrasound area, uh, advanced ultrasound uh, products, uh, sonar, medical, and uh, NDT pipeline uh, monitoring and so on. Uh, that's but basically what we do is a very niche market. We are in this market for more than 24 years and manufacturing that uh, in various parts. Our, our role in InCommerce, as most of you know, was uh, the uh, work group five, uh, five one, five two, six one, and, and seven. So um, I basically had to get all the results from Jan and I was talking to Jan and make my uh, our uh, um, conclusion from that. And so I, I tried to make it short here. Um, this is one of the most important graph um, came which came out of um, <clears throat> work group 521. And it shows really how much uh, wattage we were able under uh, comparable conditions to harvest from kinetic vibration. And as we can see, uh, the, the harvesting from uh, PZT, uh, let zirconium titanate, is far above of ev everything else. And <clears throat> since the um, uh, PCT or the kinetic harvester already have a pretty hard um, competition with batteries, um, that's important. It's really important um, to go down here in the very low end and also where the TPGs are and so on. Uh, that's more science or future um, research to go there. Um, but if you want to do any exploitable, we probably have to focus on that. Um, even barium titanate, uh, which we built as a as a substitute for uh, PZT, let zircon titanate, is just a factor of five below what you could do with the same size uh, PZT. So, and uh, PVDF always is uh, a magnitude less than PZT. And that's true also for ultrasound application of PVDF. So that, that's nothing new. So for that background, um, I just focused on the MFC and giving some more background to the MFC, um, which um, is something to pursue here. So um, I don't know if you ever read into our uh, email uh, on our website, uh, the MFC or microfiber composite was developed by NASA Langley Research Center uh, between 1998 and 2002. It was mainly uh, as an actuator for aerospace. NASA was actively looking into morphing of wings from fixed airplanes, satellites, and so on. That was a, a driving factor back then to develop uh, that a uh, flexible type of actuator based on PZT fibers. Uh, Smart Material licensed uh, that technology and all the patents exclusively from the US government in 2002. And then we basically started to manufacture it and improve it um, over the years. So <clears throat> 22 years later, uh, it is basically used as actuator, um, up to 10 kilohertz as a sensor, mostly strain gauge or vibration sensor. Energy harvester has become a very fast growing field and also for structural health monitor, mostly guided wave acoustic spectroscopy. It, <clears throat> it's very flexible and robust. It's reliable. It has been tested by many independent uh, research agencies in energy harvesting, especially um, it is encapsulated and fault tolerant in many ways. Uh, broadband application for resonant and non-resonant energy harvesting applications. Uh, we have shown we can integrate electronic components onto it. And as of today, there are more than 700 international papers using the MFC and kinetic harvester. So any of your problems you're looking at, uh, it's always worthwhile to do a search on, on the web, normally saying microfiber composite and um, energy harvesting for railroads or something like that. And at least a couple of papers will pop up. The total number of papers about the MFCs in all fields is now 1,700. So that's a big body of uh, academic uh, data. Um, since NASA started it, um, we have increased 
the available technologies of the MFC. So uh, the first one is the D33 mode, um, which is the actuator, which is using interdigitated electrodes. And uh, it's normally used for actuators and structural health monitoring. Um, we also provide that in different PZT materials, um, depending on the applications. The, the new device is the D31 uh, MFC, what we call the P2 or P3 type. And they are available in different um, PCT materials, um, uh, the, the Navy Type 2, Navy Type 6, uh, 5A, 5H material. And in, in the past, growingly in um, single crystal. Um, <clears throat> the InCommerce project did not touch single crystal, but um, we have measurements that single crystal outperforms PCT uh, on the one page by factor uh, by more than 60%. So, from those 18 milliwatt, um, we tested there in um, work package 5.2. Uh, you basically can get all the way up to a 28 or 29. Only the disadvantage of single crystal is it's it's, it's uh, almost uh, prohibitive expensive. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, out of inventory more than 30 standard sizes available, but. Um, more than 50% of all products are customized, so we can customize the sizes very quickly. Um, what most of you have uh, seen during the work packages, the P1 and P2 are anisotropic, so they have a preferred uh, force coupling direction, normally along their long direction. And the P3 is more orthotropic, but not as flexible. And in 5.2, uh, work package, we also tested uh, barium titanate, a uh, lead-free um, ferroelectric or uh, piezoelectric material, um, more to comply with Rocha, but um, the performance is still so far behind. The prices are still very high. It is not really expected that lead-free will be any competition to PCT in the next couple of years. Um, that's just currently on the situation and um, the, uh, the the exception Rocha, um, will probably uh, be continued. And honestly, uh, the rest of the world does not really care about it. So uh, since we are exporting in more than 35 countries, it's always interesting to see those different markets. So um, I, I just want to put this slide up for all of you which might not uh, have an, the different operational modes in mind. So the D3 mode, which is a PCT mode, along the long direction of the PCT has interdigitated electrode and basically is energizing uh, the PCT in the pl planar mode here. It has a much higher strain component than the D31, uh, but it is also very high impedance. The D31 or the P2 type, which we use for the energy harvesting, they have an extra metal layer in there, similar build up with the electrode, but in principle, they are energized in the thickness direction, what you normally um, know from PCT wafers or, or similar. It still keeps its flexibility over a wafer um, in doing that. Why did we develop that unit? Um, in principle, um, the D31 has a much higher um, capacitance, almost 10 times more than the D33, which is very important for uh, energy harvesting, uh, for lower voltage energy harvesting anywhere between 3 and 80 volt um, in comparison between um, almost up to a couple hundred volt with a D33. It's very difficult to harness that type of impedance and voltage. Also, due to the higher coverage of electrode material, uh, a typical D31 MFC for energy harvesting gives you about 3,250 picocoulomb per ppn charge output. As you know, the MFC is not delivering a voltage. It's a current, um, often overviewed, but uh, you're dealing with uh, AC current coming out from PCT harvester. Compared to the same size, um, uh, D33 MFC, which is only half as much. So that's why we developed on the P2 type MFCs to get higher output of that. 
So um, something I always have um, looked into all the work packages, uh, but I normally present on many uh, um, conferences is efficacy because in all the applications in work package six and so on, uh, often it was said there's not enough outcome. Uh, typically there is enough uh, kinetic energy available, uh, but you cannot harvest all of that. Uh, and that's basically the efficacy in that. Why is that? So the theory uh, for mechanical energy to electrical energy is uh, PZT has a mechanical coupling coefficient uh, less than 70%, so it's pretty high. The, if you have an optimum impedance matching, you can have an electric charge extraction of 85% and storage and output power stabilization with a step down uh, uh, approach can yield 80%. So totally, you, you pers uh, in theory, you can get 47% uh, efficacy, which is much better than solar panels. But the reality is much different as you already uh, anticipated. In, in a typical mechanical setting, uh, you seldomly uh, get more than 30%. It's normally than 30% mechanical coupling. So it's, it's half of it. The impedance matching is very difficult. Uh, for the extraction and exactly here is one of the biggest problem uh, to use kinetic harvester in any real application. Um, you're really uh, bouncing between a uh, possible maximum which you only reach in using very large electric uh, inductivities so like big Henry uh, uh, coils which you don't want to do. Um, and so today's devices mostly use charge coupling. Jan put this in this uh, WP6 paper. He, he uh, basically explained it on several pages why you're losing so much in extraction. And uh, storage output uh, stabilization is really 80%. So in a non-resonant energy harvesting system, you don't get more than 6% efficacy today which is very important to note uh, compared to others. And if you have a resonant system, which is not that common, uh, you can get 12%. It's still less than today's uh, solar panel. So that's very important to understand for all applications um, you're looking at, like um, Dimitri already pointed out in his uh, excellent paper before me here. So th that's just something I want to remind you. Um, here is the problem. So uh, Jan also uh, put this up. It's very simple to, to have high uh, efficiency or efficacy. The output uh, resistance, so your electronics, should be much higher than the input resistance, your harvester. But for more ma maximum energy transfer, they should be equal. So you always will face a compromise between those two requirements. Why is it so difficult with PZT? Um, I, I just give you one example. This is uh, the M2814P2 energy harvester MFC, and it changes its impedance uh, with frequency. So for frequencies higher than 10 Hertz, you have an almost good or similar impedance. But if you move below 10 Hertz or 8 Hertz, as it is often with variables or some other um, uh, applications, it's just exponentially higher than here. So here's your conundrum. Basically, your electronic has to adapt to those different impedance to increase the efficacy. Um, so that's something very well to keep in, in mind um, in when designing electronics. So, <clears throat> Our takeaway here from uh, InCommerce is that we use some of the techniques for designing the electronic uh, circuit uh, harvesters and also improve them. So at this point, um, we have two commercially available PEH circuits for the MFC. Um, this is a very small one, three millimeter by uh, three centimeter by two centimeter. And that's something we designed for, especially for IOTs, where we use a one millifarad capacitor to store the energy, to release it in high uh, wattage bursts or uh, to uh, accommodate 
Well, uh, Dimitri has already said um, wireless data packages to be sent uh, in that. So that's something which was very important that we looked into the InCommerce project. And uh, it is our takeaway that we have to spend much more time on uh, electronics, which help with the efficacy and the application and also are very inexpensive uh, to compete with battery application, which also get much better. So with that, I would like uh, to conclude. Um, uh, I'm only um, the ersatz guy here for Jan. I'm sorry that he couldn't be here. He spent so much time with his team in that. So we're really grateful to be a partner in this great team. And um, we will we'll take it from here. If you have any question, uh, here's my uh, email address. So don't hesitate to contact me. Just keep in mind, I'm mostly in the United States, so it's a six hour time difference. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for your presentation. So is there any question uh, to Thomas? OK, so we are five minutes uh, ahead of schedule, but uh, briefly, since we are closing the, the income uh, session and uh, right after the coffee, we will go to the um, uh, RHS cluster session where different uh, project coordinators, project man managers will give uh, the overview and, and present also the results of other European funded uh, projects, mainly focused on energy harvesting um, topic. I will take a few minutes of your time just to let me share um, a slide. Yes, here it is. So maybe you can see here, right? Uh, you, uh, can you see it? Yes, yes, we can yep. see. Thank you. So uh, with this slide, I just wanted to um, to recap a uh, summary of results because uh, mostly all the, the work and results have been presented during this uh, session. Um, and well, just um, beginning that the, the income energy generators and harvesters, which were mainly Pesuacic and Thermal uh, despite they have demonstrated their ability to, um, to harvest uh, vibrations or thermal waste heat and even generate uh, electrical energy, uh, it must be pointed out that the, the performance is too far from the um, from the commercial solutions. In this case, uh, lead-based piezoelectric materials or bismuth and telluride-based uh, thermoelectric materials. So what we have encountered is uh, some issues regarding the low power output to feed the, the conditioner circuit and all electronics. So uh, when these energy generators were um, tested in the use cases, we saw that it was impossible to feed the, the all conditioner and, and wireless sensor nodes. So now that the monitoring could be achieved through this IoT gateway because uh, well, it was impossible to transmit any, any data. But on the other hand, uh, what we have seen in the in the project is as the that the all the energy harvesting focus on the wireless sensor node have been demonstrated in two scenarios. In the aeronautic use case, uh, the combination of the conditioner circuit plus the monad gator and Bluetooth uh, wireless communication for monitoring a fiber optic sensor was possible to to fit the sensors and and it was possible also to to see the the temperature data that were this uh, fiber optic sensor um, uh, were um, recording or or reading sorry so this is uh, affects also that the monad gator. So in this project, they, they miniaturize fiber optic sensor interrogator that it has been developed by Photon First has been demonstrated and, and uh, that is re reliable uh, to use this um, miniaturized first interrogator for energy harvesting. While in the automotive use case, this energy harvesting wireless sensor no was 
also demonstrated. So the PCC that has been developed together with the supercapacitors and fuel level well resistor and IoT was um, was promising, and it was possible to to see the the, the data of these uh, fuel uh, level sensors uh, depending on the driving conditions, as uh, well uh, Marelli Maur in this case um, presented today. And also that the, that is possible to 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 use these printing supercapacitors for stir, storing the energy harvesting uh, harvested sorry by the commercial solutions in this case uh, replacing or discarding the the use of batteries and so. And to finalize, that it's possible to implement these energy harvesting uh, systems into IoT for sensors data monitoring mainly. So pow uh, powering very low um, uh, sense wireless sensor nodes. But uh, still, on just uh, again, a uh, remark that the, from the energy generator side, uh, still a challenge to to improve the the performance. Um, so so still uh, much work and uh, need to be done in in this in this field. So with that, I will like to close this session. And since uh, well, let me check the the time. So it's uh, 14 now. So if you agree, uh, we can do 10 minutes break. So there's a question, sorry. Yes. Jonas? Hey. Yeah, sorry, I don't have yet the presenter rights for the next presentation. I just wanted to mention, I don't know. If you... Hey, I guess uh, my colleague Maria can respond to it or from communication. Yes, give me a side. second, Jonas. Yes, one second. Now it's yes, working. Yes, right? you should yeah. be ready. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, meet again in 10 minutes. Okay, so see you at 14 10. Okay, so there is also a problem with uh, Magdalena, which is not possible to. Okay, you, you are muted as well. Okay, so my colleague Maria will take a look and will give you access as, as presenter. Sure, I will check now in the break if you want everybody, no problem. Your camera is also disabled, well it should be working as well. Yeah, thank you. So see you in 10 minutes, okay? Sorry, apologies for, for the delay. Thank you very much.
So welcome you all. And uh, before starting with the presentations of the different uh, European uh, projects, I would like to just to grab you a few minutes about the case cluster. So while well, this was uh, posted in Incomes website, but uh, IRHAS means uh, stands for Energy Harvesting for Sustainable Future, and it it's, um, it comprises uh, three projects. So Incomes, a Fast and Smart Project, and Symphony Project. Um, since a um, few months, also Star Project was engaged, so this has to be updated. But well, just to let you know that uh, the goals of this RHS cluster is to um, are depicted here. So to refine a knowledge sharing the framework of, uh, around common goals to increase also the outreach of each project's activities, enhance the divisibility of the European efforts towards these energy harvesting solutions, and enhance and rationalize the communication and dissemination uh, through stakeholders. So our idea is also to, to strengthen uh, our um, um, efforts of, uh, of these uh, four projects um, for reaching different stakeholders, not only for dissemination, but also for the exploitation plan. So having said that, I finalize and I will give the word to Dr. Jonas Grutten, who will present us the results of Symphony project. Yes, thank you very much. So I will share my screen. I think you can see it now, right? Yes. So, yes, I'm the coordinator of the Symphony project, which is more or less a sister project of Incomes, funded in the same EU call. Uh, we started a little bit later than the Incomes project, and we are still will run until end of April. So the Symphony project, uh, standing for Smart Hybrid Multimodal Printed Harvesting of Energy, is very similar to the Incomes project. We are uh, made up of 14 partners from four countries and with a duration of 48 months. So what's the, the topic of the uh, of the project? On the one hand, uh, it's nano generators. So here uh, we focused on PVDF TRFE based uh, nano generators, incorporating um, magnetic particles, structuring these harvesters for, for better mechanical resonance, and also coupling it with other polymers to make it more, more stretchable and, and elastic. Um, additionally, we worked on storage solutions, uh, flexible redox polymer batteries, uh, printed rectifier circuits, and also uh, super caps uh, based on um, yeah, active carbon and nanocellulose fibers. Um, we focused on an integration technique uh, using scalable printing coating uh, techniques, and then a hybrid integration with electronics and uh, to come finally to our use cases, with, which will be the focus of the talk today. Uh, in the last year, of course, we tried to, uh, to implement uh, PVF TFE-based nanogenerators in different use cases. Uh, we had three use cases in the project, which is bicycle tubes, uh, smart floors, and rotor plates of wind turbines. They were basically selected from, from areas where in energy generation, uh, mobility and, and um, housing, there is a lot of CO2 emissions. So we wanted also to show that with sensors in these areas, we can trigger a, a reduction of CO2 emissions. So um, of course the material PVDF TFE is well known in this community. Uh, we are using uh, copolymer PVDF with TRFE because we want to apply it by printing from solution processing. And the uh, good thing is that with the copolymer TRFE, it directly crystallizes in the piezoelectric beta phase. Uh, as you are in Neon Research, we have a long experience uh, with this material and the screen printing of this material, uh, also uh, used for sensing uh, in the so called Pisoflex uh, technology. So uh, the typical um, D3 free coefficient we, we achieve is around 24 picocoulomb per newton in the in the standard uh, setup, 
and you can uh, find a lot of uh, papers on this material also from ourselves of my group uh, leader Stadlova. there is a recent review uh, where you can look up uh, a lot of properties so if we now come to the use cases so i want to start with the self-powered smart floor our idea is that we want to take the energy from walking above a floor to detect if there is somebody in room which could be used to trigger uh energy savings so uh, switching off the light uh, reduce heating and ventilation when when no when a room is empty and of course uh we want not don't want to use uh, cameras or things like that which which are always a, a privacy concern so in that sense we thought about how to realize it and it was clear that to maintain the feeling of a floor we need to have a very small uh mechanical actuation so we came up with a solution of mini cantilevers, um, which are basically small PVDF TFE cantilevers pressed down in a in a small space, and we li limited ourselves to below one millimeter of travel distance to keep the feeling of walking on a on a rigid floor. Uh, on the right side, there is a, a mock-up of the final device where these mini cantilevers are basically uh, distributed in a, in a floorboard. And this was also recently published in, in Nano Energy, so you can find a lot of details on this concept here. Uh, basically, we started here with a simulation to optimize the, um, the, the cantilevers. Um, first, we have set up a, a model for PVDF TFE to really um, reflect uh, basically our output and to compare this with measurement data. Depending on the on the length of the cantilever, we have uh, of course more or less D3 free and D3 one contributions. Uh, so we we brought this into a FEM model and simulated with console different cantilever lengths and thicknesses of the P, uh, PVDF TFE layer uh, and checked uh, that the model is correct. Uh, then finally, uh, our goal was to increase uh, the energy output. We achieved this by multi-layer stacking of the PVDF TRFE on both sides of these cantilevers. And due to the space confinement, uh, basically we have, um, uh, depending on the length of the cantilever, we, we can bend it more down or, or less down. And of course, longer cantilevers lead, need less force to bend them down but they will uh, at a certain point hit the floor. So this gave an optimization problem for this floor uh, uh, cantilever example. And we finally managed to, to build up uh, such a floor so that with, with each step uh, we have uh, at the, at the uh, nano generate an open circuit voltage of 10 volts and current peaks of around 150 microamps. And um, with a very simple circuit, we, we stored this basically in a, in a capacitor and uh, charged up a 30 microfarad capacitor. Um, and as soon as we have reached 3.6 volt, a comparator switched through and powers a small and ocean device to transmit a, an RF beacon. So um, this is possible within two, uh, two to three steps. Um, we are currently working on improving a little bit the electronics because we, we still lose some of the energy in this uh, transfer from the from the nano generator to the storage cap so that we finally uh, our goal is to achieve it with one step uh, if you calculate the, the input energy the, the energy is there uh, so we are now focusing on, on improving a little bit the, the energy transfer here to the to the storage cap and the second use case uh, we cooperated with the company tubulito in the project um, working on bicycle tubes um, they already have um, a system, an electronic system inside uh, the bicycle tube working with NFC to uh, read uh, the, the tire pressure and the temperature. But of course, for, for riding and, and sending the data to the, to the uh, cycling computer, it would be much more efficient to power it constantly to, to get the data with, with BLE. And um, of course, this is this is nice uh, for for professional cyclists uh, to always know that the temperature and, and pressure is on the right uh, state. But it could also, for example, uh, really reduce energy consumption in e-bikes, uh, increasing the durability of the tubes as um, as the uh, snake bites are much more prominent if you're riding at the wrong pressure, and uh, help to maintain uh, rental e-bike systems for 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 example when when the re remote pressure monitoring is possible. 
So to achieve this challenge, uh, we uh, had uh, through the company access to really put the electronics inside the uh, tube. On the right side, you can see a nanogenerator, again with a printed multi-layer PVDF TFE. On the left side, there is a, a small PCB uh, with a Nordic uh, chip uh, transmitting data via BLE as soon as uh, enough energy is harvested. And here the challenge really was um, the durability inside the tube. It's a very hot uh, mechanical environment and we did a lot of integration testing uh, on the one hand, still getting enough energy by this information, uh, by this deformation of the tube. On the other hand, making it, it robust and durable, uh, putting the electronics in such a uh, TPU foam is, is, is a very good solution here. And what I really want to point out and, and uh, which is a lesson learned from, from our project, when it comes to energy harvesting, uh, we of course had here the possibility to really uh, uh, structure the PVDF layer thickness, the sizes and the cantilevers. And it's in, in my opinion really important for each application to really tune um, the cantilever um, or the harvester uh, to the mechanical input. Um, as we can otherwise lose a lot of energy as you for, for example can see here in this, in this right diagram, the only difference between these two harvesters is that on, on the left side there is uh, five layers with a thin PVDF TFE. On the right side there is four layers with a little bit thicker uh, PVDF TFE. And by this, of course, we switch uh, the maximum power point uh, quite a lot. And as our electronics is working at 3.6 volt, we cycle the storage cup ar around between two and, and, and 3.6 volts. So with this, um, um, basically adaption of, of layer thickness we, we directly uh, get uh, at this working voltage an increase of a factor of, of two. Um, of course uh, this power output in the bicycle is depending on the on the inflation of the tube because uh, the less inflated the, the higher power output. Uh, it depends of course on the on the speed because uh, the faster we run um, uh, the more excitations we have. Uh, but on average, we really have a sufficient power output of, of uh, 60 to 200 microwatts at uh, 20 kilometers per hour. And uh, we finally integrated this in, a, in the bicycle. Oh, sorry. It was not intended to play the sound here. Maybe I can switch it off. No. So going back to presentation mode. So basically we did a lot of durability testing and integrated the PVDF TFE based harvesters inside the tube. Um, we tested it uh, with a 5,000 hey, uh, kilo. Can sorry, you, still? you are not sharing the presentation, oh. but at least I, I cannot see it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, probably it stopped sharing when I am trying to. Now it's sharing again, right? Yes. Okay, so basically we did a lot of durability testing uh, with these generators, uh, generators packed inside the, the bicycle tube. Uh, we have made a small app and uh, we could finally uh, achieve so more or less every minute we get a transmission via BLE uh, to our smartphone with the pressure and temperature reading uh, of, the, of the bicycle tube. Uh, we have also a third use case uh, there. I can't uh, show that that much. Uh, because we don't uh, got the data back. So we are working here together with AirLogix, uh, providing condition monitoring systems for, for wind turbines. Uh, we have two systems here really installed in the field on a wind turbine after doing extensive weathering testing, um, where uh, on the one hand, we, we use this vibration of these serrations on the wind turbine to generate energy. On the other hand, we have such a drum-based uh, type harvester vi where vibrations and, and wind can, can attack. Also, this was supported by simulation before, uh, before installation. Here we are only backing up basically uh, solar power powering, which is the main energy source, but there are long uh, winters, especially in the, in the northern part of the, uh, of the hemisphere where uh, solar power is, is not available for a long time. So here uh, we try to support uh, this condition monitoring system by, by gets electric energy harvesting and uh, the final data should be available quite soon. 
So uh, with this, I want to con conclude the presentation. Um, I think I could show you that nano generators based on PVDF TFE are possible really to to power uh, to to give enough power to to uh, make I IoT uh, solutions. Um, we had three very different use cases in terms of, of uh, excitation. So a step energy, very low frequencies. Uh, the tire uh, flexing where we have uh, frequencies around 1 to 10 hertz and the uh, wind turbine where we have 100 to 200 hertz excitation. And uh, to emphasize this again, the me mechanical coupling is, is very important in this energy harvesting scenarios and, and needs to be done for, for every use case. Um, the multi-layer PENGS is a very good uh, solution basically to, to optimize uh, especially charge generation and uh, the layer thickness can then be adapted to shift the maximum power point to the to the working point needed. Um, very important is also low power harvester electronics. Um, so uh, wireless data transmission, there is a, a huge difference in, in, in different BLE modules. Uh, and um, of course, it's then very important also to uh, adapt the storage cap and, and all the electronics in between to not lose the harvested energy, which is difficult as you might know uh, in the end. With this, I want to thank all the Symphony team for this great work, and uh, you can uh, contact the Symphony webpage or also uh, myself via email. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there are. So, is there any question for Jonas? There is a question in the chat. Ah, yes, you're right. So, Rolana said, uh, what's your opinion on the viability and sustainability of PVDF-based devices in the context of recent uh, European Union efforts to restrict uh, the PFAS, including fluoropolymers? Yeah, of course, this is a very good question. I mean, um, at the start of the Symphony project, um, PVDF was seen as a possible uh, replacement for PCT, for lead containing mm -hmm particles so uh, maybe this step is uh, already too slow because now fluorine uh, wants to be um, replaced um, yeah i personally think um, for for us as material researchers it's a good opportunity to also look in, in biological in organic materials um, however i mean uh, fluorine based polymers are used in, in a lot of applications where there is currently no real replacement for it uh, so i'm i'm skeptical if if uh, I, I could imagine that that uh, probably um, more fast like monomer types of, of materials will be will be tried to replace. But I think in, in a polymer state, it will be uh, probably allowed for a longer time. But we as material researchers, I think we should uh, think uh, three steps ahead. So looking into new materials, into other possible materials is probably uh, a good solution as, as a research center. So is there any question? Yes, from my side, please, Cynthia. Yes. Hi, Jonas, thank you for the presentation. I might miss your point. So at the very beginning, you, you introduced something related to architecture magneto composite. Mm -hmm. Have you implemented this uh, methodology? I mean, this, uh... Yes, we have, we, have, we have done it. We have uh, tested it. Um, I have to admit, uh, like also in, in UK, uh, in the Incomes case, I would say, uh, new materials to bring into a level, uh, new composites which are that mature that they can stand really the durability in these challenging use cases is, is very difficult. And also that they compete in this case with the standard material of PVDF TFE. So uh, I think we have made int interesting developments, um, but I think it's still a little bit uh, a way to go until we can really apply this as, as the same way as we have. Uh, a very uh, huge experience with PVDF TRV, but um, but there will be will be publications soon also on on the on the material developments. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Another question. So I have a curiosity regarding the um, the, the screen printed devices or mainly based of PVDF TRV. So you you mentioned that you were able to to print uh, several layers right on onto each other. Yes. So which was the, the maximum layers that you applied 
uh, for the case of the, 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 the floor, the smart floor. Mm -hmm. So there we, we had uh, at maximum three layers on each side. So mm -hmm. um, there are publications with, with more layers as well. Um, of course, this is always a processing effort. I, I would say we, we don't have uh, automatic screen printing with a lot of uh, printing uh, runs in a row. So so basically it's a manual process. So at, uh, at, at one point we also have to stop. Also, of course, in processing, we increase roughness with, with each layer a little bit. So there there is, I would say, a natural end. Um, I want to emphasize that stacking more and more and making the layers thinner is not the only solution because you also have to keep an eye on the voltage. So therefore you need an, yes. a certain layer thickness and this makes basically an optimization problem with the with the thickness of the stack and 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 the layer thickness. So as I could show, so this, this four to five layers in the bicycle tube use case, it really made uh, already a, a big shift. So there is, is optimization space. Uh, yes. There already in this amount and of things. And the the energy harvesting by these steps uh, is used for because maybe maybe I miss that. that yeah, point. so we 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 just um, uh, we trigger. There is an ocean board uh, transmitting an RF beacon saying it's activated. So with this beacon, we can basically monitor which tiles were were activated if there is somebody in the room. So it's it's oh, radio nice. frequency transmission. Okay, thank you. And regarding the wireless communication, you are using also Bluetooth uh, protocols. So in the smart flow use case, I said it's RF transmission. In the bicycle ah, okay. use case, it's a Bluetooth protocol. It, for the mobile, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Very interesting and very nice results. So yes, so if anyone has uh, any question for Jonas, please drop it in the chat. Or, well, you have also uh, his email. So let's uh, give a uh, welcome to Magdalena Rostagno. Uh, hi. So she will present the Fast Smart Project um, key results and overview. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Cynthia. I'm, I'm, ch I'm sharing my screen. Let's see. Okay. Try again. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me and can you see my screen, correct? Yes. Yeah, good. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to Incomes Project to invite uh, FASMAR to present today. Uh, I have to apologize in behalf of Professor Chin of the University of Strathclyde, he is the project coordinator that couldn't be present today. Uh, my name is Madalena Rostagno, uh, Guy Engineering that I represent is the Dissemination Exploitation Manager of the project. We are a company active in the building sector and uh, in the project uh, we are in charge uh, of the life cycle analysis of the developed materials and processes. So I apologize uh, if I maybe I cannot uh, answer to detailed questions about the material and process development. Okay. Uh, but you can uh, ask me your questions and uh, I will take care that Professor Chin can, uh, can answer all of your curiosities. Uh, I would start uh, uh, for first, the first thing with the ERAS cluster that I'm very glad that we created. I have to thank uh, Ayman for this because in the beginning we were contacted by them. I really like the idea since uh, the beginning. Uh, up to today, the cluster is composed by these four projects, Incomes, Start, Symphony. Uh, we count them, we are around 53 partners involved. So it's a really a, a huge network in the sector. And uh, as already said in some meeting, it would have been nice to have a continuation of this initiative, but uh, I understood most of the projects are finishing. As far as concerned Fast Mart, uh, we had an extension because due to the COVID, uh, <clears throat> there were many closures of labs that didn't allow to complete certain activities. So the project will end uh, uh, in October. Also, for this reason, it's not possible for me uh, today show you in detailed way uh, the achievements concerning uh, the materials and, uh, and the final uh, pilot plants because there are also some, uh, some patents uh, under request. 
So the coordinator itself and the technical partner asked me for the moment not to disclosure yet the final details. Uh, an overview about FastMart, who we are. We are a project from Horizon, from, uh, uh, Horizon, no, Horizon 2020. Yes, I don't even the name. Uh, funded by European Commission, 14 organizations. A project lasted 40, uh, 54 months with the continuation. Uh, we started on the 1st of April 2020 and will finish at the end of September with an average budget of 7 million euro. Here you can see all the, the partners of the projects. Uh, the particular interest I think today are our end users. We have uh, a French company, Cedra Technologies, uh, specialized in micro device. Uh, they propose for this project as application the development of sensors equipped with the FASMART piezoelectric materials for the early detention of failure in the, in the track uh, networks. This uh, will avoid, for example, uh, tragic incidents uh, like uh, the one happened in Italy some years ago, and uh, to improve uh, the efficiency and um, productivity of the maintenance. For the, for the railway networks. Then we have a D4S, that is a, a company in Italy specialized in advanced system for the automotive sectors. Here they propose to integrate uh, energy harvesters with better integrated system to increase the power supply uh, of, uh, of the engine. Then we have uh, the University of Cologne that substituted an end user that we had in a project for solar panels, but they have several collaboration uh, in Germany at European level with the company exploiting uh, solar panels in large uh, plants. And so they are developing energy harvesters to be integrated also here to increase the uh, uh, efficiency of the power supply. Uh, which is the concept of our project? The concept of our project is based in uh, uh, working uh, on the materials, of course, uh, eliminating as more as possible uh, critical materials, rare elements and lead. We focused uh, principally uh, mainly on two categories of material. Nano lead free piezoelectric, uh, um, barium calcium zirconate titanate, and uh, nanostructural thermoelectric magnesium silicide uh, materials. Uh, also, um, half hauser alloys. Here, there is the overall concept of the project that it's based on uh, materials development, <coughs> but also on process development, making the process faster and more efficient. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just recovering from a flu, so I hope my, my voice won't fail. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> as far as concerned the technical achievements, um, I can show you here today some, uh, some pictures from one of the partner. Uh, they deposited carbon nanotube on uh, <coughs> magnesium silicon uh, silicide fibers, and uh, it could uh, improve drastically uh, the thermal degradations. It starts at 550 degrees, while the, um, the bare the carbon nanotube starts at 450 degrees. Thank you for your attention and available to question. Sorry for my voice that failed as I was uh, worried about. Thank you very much, Magdalena. Yes. So is there any question? <coughs> OK, I just have a curiosity regarding the, the carbon nanotubes, which are coated with silica, right? And which, uh, which is the purpose or um, for which aim you are doing that? I take, uh, yes, I take back. Uh, it's a uh, second take back the presentation and not is still shared. Yes. Or is it? OK, can you still see my pre the presentation? Okay. Not now. Yes, this is uh, to increase uh, the. Um, um, one second. Mm -hmm. I, sh I share the presentation so we can see. 
This is developed for the energy investors for solar panel solar for panel solar applications. Panels, okay. Yes, and uh, to make the material more more efficient, as far as I guess, because uh, if you can achieve this on Thermal fibers, mm -hmm. the occupancy of the device itself uh, is reduced. Okay, the size. This is done uh, with this purpose. But if you have uh, more curiosity about this. Um, I can uh, put you in contact with the partner this yes. develop. No, no, no problem. Yes, I. So it, it, the the main aim is to to be assembled or to be used in solar panels. Yes, so for yes. the tolerance, yes, right? the too, temperature yes. tolerance. Yes, exactly. Yes. exactly. Okay, thank you very much. I think there is a a question in the chat. Let me check. Or uh, no, there is not. No, sorry. So is there yes now there somebody raise a hand so please feel free to 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 ask your questions. Thank you. I, I have only one question. Uh, you spoke about uh, integrated harvesters for solar panels, but is the material that uh, is able to collect energy from uh, solar solar energy and mechanical energy at the same time? Or you have an harvester integrated on the panel? Uh, as far as I understood, there is an harvester integrated in the panel. Okay. okay. So uh, the, they want to develop this uh, more efficient, not, not more efficient, more environmental friendly material. Mm. I understood there is not um, a big improvement in the performance of the material, but important is that it's uh, free from critical material uh, and whatever. And uh, as far as concerning the integration of the energy investor, this is the part that it's in this moment in development, okay, with the what is it our end user, and it should be the novelty in the panel itself, okay, mm -hmm. to be able to integrate it and make it function it in an uh, efficient way. Thank you. So there is also a part of assembly and design in the process, in the project. But it's uh, it's all really still running. That's why we ask an extension uh, up to the end of the year. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Alberta. Yes. Any other question? Or curiosity? Okay, so maybe we can. So, uh, thank you again, Magdalena, for your presentation. And wish you uh, all success in the final stage of the, of the project. Thank you. And thank <laughs> you for joining us. <laughs> so let's give the floor to to Philippe Neves that he will present the start project and and project overview. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. I think you can see the, my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. I want to acknowledge first the opportunity to give uh, this presentation about the start project. And I also want to congratulate the Incomer Symphony Fast Market project for the work they are doing on the energy harvesting systems. Um, so let me start. Here is my. Sorry, one minute. OK, this is the presentation outline. I will start by giving you the motivation for doing this project, the overview of the start activities, the main objective, some information about the consortium, the main concept of the project, the expected outcomes, the main impact, and how to follow the different activities. So uh, starting with the motivation, so we know we are aware that we are facing many challenges nowadays. One of them is related with climate change. And uh, this uh, implies uh, the need to implement several measures related with the green transition to which the European Union is fully committed through the European Green Deal. However, at the same time, this uh, green transition implies uh, intensive use of minerals. So, uh, and due to the due to that, 
is causing uh, increase in waste volumes from mining operations and also the declining of the quality of ores. So the use of mine wastes as available secondary raw materials for the development of advanced energy conversion devices creates an increase economic incentive to eliminate, to eliminate the environmental hazard tellings caused by this factor. On the other hand, we know that the current commercial thermal article devices uses through light based thermal elements. And just uh, one fact, uh, the thermal article production, production accounts for around 30% of the global consumption of tellurium. However, this element is derived or refined from minerals that are scarce in Europe, making the continent heavily dependent, important dependent. So, it is important to address the replacement of tellurite based thermological materials to develop more sustainable thermological devices. So, the main goal of the START activities is to create a sustainable supply chain for green energy harvesting products. Uh, we this is was already spoken during the the, the different presentations. Uh, so uh, this the process the process of energy harvesting is captured from a system environment and converted into useful energy. For example, thermal energy, and we all know there is a huge amount of primary energy produced worldwide that is lost to the environment as waste waste heat that can be recovered using thermal electrical technology. Or, and we know that the thermal electrical devices are scalable, modular, and can be customized to fit different sizes and shape of the heat search, search and can operate in a wide range of temperatures. However, as I said before, uh, they cannot achieve a very low cost to the scarcity and cost of tellurium. So it is important, really important, to address this issue related with the place, replacement of tellurite-based thermoelectric materials. Uh, just some generic information about the START project. So it's, it, it is entitled Sustainable Energy Harvesting System Based on Innovative Mine Waste Recycling. It is an innovation action project that is co-funded by European Union and its Horizon program. It was approved on this topic, cluster four topic, building innovative value change from raw materials to sustainable products. It started in June 22 and it uh, has a total duration of 48 months. It means that it be concluded at, at May 2026. And you have here some also some information about the total cost of the project. Now, some information about the consortium, uh, the coordination, the coordinating institution, it's NESH, the National Laboratory of Energy and Geology from Portugal. And the consortium aggregates a total of 15 partners. Uh, that includes six research organizations, seven SMEs companies, and two non-profit uh, international uh, associations. So what is the start approach to address this issue related with the replacement fluoride based thermological materials? As I said, it, it, we will produce on start advanced sulfide P-type materials that will incorporate discarded waste secondary sulfides, mainly uh, 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 coming from the tetrodite mineral series. If it, this in this table, we can compare, for example, Stamp characteristics of commercial relevant thermoelectrical materials uh, with the tetrodite uh, material. So we can see here that relate, regarding the tetrodite and uh, related with the, the characteristics that are here uh, uh, highlighted, there is a positive assessment for all these points here when compared with the more conventional thermoelectrical materials. On the other hand, uh, tetrodite uh, can be found all around the world as it is highlighted here by these different circles on the different continents on the world map. And tetrodite, which is a, a copper antimonide uh, sulfur salt, where the main elements are copper, antimony and sulfur, 
is relatively abundant in some copper mine tailings uh, and can be found in different categories of Europe. And uh, we in start are using a unique technological, so we are proposing a new technological solution that is to transform the waste secondary sulfite materials in sustainable high headed value compounds for toluene free thermological devices. This implies many different activities. One of those activities is related to with the collection and treatment of the waste material that is collected on the on different uh, locations on different uh, countries of Europe. As you can see here, some pictures related with the environment and locations where the sample were collected for the start project. For example, in uh, Roswana mine in Slovakia, in Barrigão mine in Portugal, Nebskorf mine in Portugal also, and also in Aus Austria. Additionally, it was also, we also collected mineral samples in from Spain and also from Germany. Uh, this implies, uh, after collecting the mineral, it implies the treatment and the incorporation uh, of this mineral is being is being conducted mainly uh, to process the, the, ter the thermal elements by powder technology. We uh, have uh, already mixed the mineral with different amounts of synthetic or pre elements. Uh, and for and it is, for example, given some of the thermological properties for some of uh, for two different samples with different ratios uh, of minerals with the synthetic material 2080 and 5050. And we can see here the figure of merit um, that is highlighted for these two different samples. Uh, that it, in these, these two cases, it ranges between. Uh, 0 0.49 and 0 0.69. And we can compare here the, these values with the most uh, uh, common thermoelectrical materials. And uh, in the background of this graphic, you can see here some of the pellets that were already produced and that will be used to uh, as for the assembly for assembling the thermoelectrical device. So all of this is part of the general start concept, which is to transform mining waste into waste heat recovery materials that, I, as I already mentioned, it implies different activities from different areas. So one of the first one is related with the recovery and reuse of mine wastes. Uh, as I said, we are using mainly mineral from the tetraite series that is is being treated in order to be incorporated in the thermoelectrical supply chain to produce the thermal elements. There is also one activity related with material processing. Uh, we are uh, producing the materials mainly by powder technology. Of course, this also implied modeling activities and also the use of, the, of advanced characterization techniques. There is also the activities related with the device, the device production, uh, which imply device design simulation, and it will imply in the future uh, the characterization of the device. There is then the scale up, of the technologies that we are using and also the validation in relevant environment. So START represents an opportunity for an efficient use of resources and to decrease the resource dependence and waste. And also it promotes the diversification of sources of renewable energy production system using green energy harvesting through thermoelectricals, through thermoelectrics, which is in line with the European Green Deal, the EU Action Plan on Critical Raw Materials and the EU Action Plan on Circular Economy. The main outcome is to uh, create innovative value chain linked to thermoelectrical renewable energy ecosystems. Uh, we expect that we will create a new market opp opportunity for the mineral resources with the activities that we are carrying out. Uh, that is expected to boost EU competitiveness on raw materials. 
and also, and also to foster the transition to a green society and economy, and also to establish a new commercial ecosystem. There are some uh, uh, several impacts that could be highlighted. I uh, choose uh, three of them uh, in the environmental aspect. So we are reprocessing sulfide containing mining residues, and this is expected to reduce the environmental impact of mining activities. On sustainable searching of raw materials, uh, we are producing tellurium free thermal electrical devices. We'll produce tellurium free ter thermal electrical devices based on tetrarite materials, which is an earth abundant mineral that is being searched from European mining sites. And also on the material and technology innovation aspect, we are using scalable methods for producing high quality P type tetrarite powder materials. And also we are performing innovation in assembling the thermal electrical models. Start uh, activities also contribute to the implementation of these uh, actions uh, of the EU action plan on critical raw materials, action three, four, five, eight, and nine, and also to the United Nations development goals seven, nine, and 11. How to follow our activities? So uh, please take note of our website and also uh, please follow our social media accounts, the X, formerly known as Twitter, the LinkedIn, and also the SlideShare. We are continually updating this, the information from the different activities on, on this uh, uh, social media accounts. Uh, sorry. And also you can uh, subscribe our BNWAL newsletter that is called Recover, Reform, Reuse for a Sustainable Future. Uh, that includes news on the project activities and also includes a comic story with Starty, this character here, which is a robot called Starty that help explain the project scope in a friendly, more comprehensive way. And we, it, the newsletter also includes uh, technical documents and also you can meet the start partners. To subscribe the newsletter, you must go to our website, to the contact page and then click on subscribe. This it's free, but uh, after being published, the newsletter is also available on our website. Uh, so to, to download. So I, before I'm concluding, I just want to, to for you to take note of this. Another way to follow uh, our activities, it's through our webinar sessions. We already performed three last year. We are starting this year with our webinar section number, uh, number four that will be carried out on the 13th of March. Uh, related with the topic of powder technology for tetrarite P-type semiconductors. Uh, please visit our website for um, more news about this event uh, in the coming days. will be available on our website. So uh, thank you for your attention and um, I'm available for any question that you you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Felipe. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. So is there any question from the audience? Well, I have seen in your presentation that the technology readiness level, it was up to six, right? Yes. So you are aim, aim at constructing right thermoelectric generators free of yes. telluride. So in a um, large scale or just a high scale, so a big amount of of devices. No, more in a large scale, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we are still on the middle of this uh, program, so uh, that is expected to be uh, to achieve that by the end of the project in 2026. At the end, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. 
So any question or? Yes, I do. Sorry, Philippe. Uh, yeah. Nice presentation, nice work. Uh, I'm not a chemist or, or geologist, um, but I, I, I just pointed something. So essentially you are picking, you are collecting uh, wasted uh, sulfide materials, minerals yeah. from different mines. Yes. Do you envisage a uh, sort of a contamination or difference in quality between the different uh, collection points? Or this doesn't apply to minerals in general speaking? No, no, no. The, the difference have different composition, of course. Yes. And that needs to be taken in co into consideration. Of course, we must, uh, at the end, we must choose the best one. Okay. Uh, okay. okay, but that needs to to be to to be that work needs to be carried out. Okay, and it's being carried out. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. At the moment, you you started more or less one year ago, right? The project. Yeah, we we started in. Uh, yeah, we are we are ended month uh, eighteen. Yeah, nineteen. Okay, but you still have a lot of months to. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's different from yours. You are ending. Yes, we yes. Are, of we course. are almost in the middle. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so good luck. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, wishing you all the best, of course. Yeah. Uh, so if there's uh, no more questions, well, you know that uh, Filippi show. Um, or share, sorry, his email. So please feel free to to yes. ask him or contact him directly. Um, well, you you also have the details of the websites of other projects. So for any question, we will happily um, answer. Um, well, as a closing, I don't know if from the other projects you want to summarize any anything or or you want to discuss um, any subject or issue. But I guess we will be in touch for the next uh, IRHE's actions. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I would like to thank you all very much for your attendance, especially well, all the, the other European funded projects who um, join us today for this initiative um, for the organization of the final question and also especially my my colleagues from the incomes um, project who were um, uh, joining today and presenting the, the the last results of the project so um, well as, I, as we told you uh, the, um, the recorded version will be uploaded to a youtube channel of the project so uh, you will be uh, notified uh, in which uh, um, link you can you can find the recorded version. And well, my, from my colleagues of I meant you will be reached uh, out soon. And well, and that's all from my side. I would like to thank also the support from I meant's marketing department uh, towards this uh, orga the organization of the event, and um, also to Core uh, Clio. Uh, who was also supportive in, in the dissemination through social networks. And well, I wish you a good afternoon and, and continue working on these amazing projects. Bye, Cynthia. Take care. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.